In this video, we're going to cover some of the basics on how to post data to an HTTP server. We're going to do it in two contexts. On the first one, we'll simply go over the basics. and the second one, we will do it with GitHub sample data. So let's go ahead and, to, and move into the basics folder. As you can see here, I have a layout of some of the files that we will be using. But to begin with, let's go ahead and move into basics. Now I have two folders here. I have a client and a server. In the client folder I have, as you might expect, the client uh, files. And then in the server once I have the ones that receive that posting. So let's go ahead and move and open up the basic file. As you can see here, it is simply 10 lines. And on the first one we're uh, requiring a certain module. This is the module in uh, Node.js that does requests. Then we define some data, define an endpoint, and then post that data. So pretty basic. Now, in order to do this, we need to go ahead and add this module first. So that's what we're going to go ahead and do next. And a word of warning, because we have not created a package file, we'll see some errors, but we can ignore them. So I'm going to go ahead and open up a new terminal here. Then I'm going to enter the command that installs it, which is npm install. I'm going to save it locally and then I'm going to enter the name of the package which in this case is request. So I'm going to go ahead and enter return and we'll see the package is being pulled down and then as I mentioned it is going to complain that we don't have a package file which is the configuration file but we can do without it. Now we're going to go ahead and do the same thing uh, for the server. Let's go ahead and take a look and see what module we require for the server and as you can see here we require two the, ver the first one is express and the second one is the body parser so let's go ahead and go back to the terminal move up one directory and then move into the server and we're going to do npm install save and then we're going to enter express you'll see the same thing that we saw before this can pull down and then the second one as you may recall is body parser and this lets us parse the data that is being posted to the server so let's go ahead and enter that here we'll hit return and you can see there that that was pulled down as well now let's go ahead and move back up and let's go ahead and run the server. Let me just make some comments about that before we get started. As you can see here, uh, as I mentioned before, we first require the module of Express, then that of Body Parser. We create an instance of that and we use that along with the Body Parser to parse the message that we received. At that point we're simply going to write to the console the contents of the body of the request and run it at the console so we can see it. So let's go ahead and close these and let's close this one as well and now let's go ahead and move to uh, our windows here and I have too many of them open. Let me go ahead and clean some of this up and I will go ahead and move into the server first Oh, I think I moved uh, too far. Let's go ahead and move into basics, then into server, and we're going to go ahead and run the server. We do that simply by entering node and the name of our server file, which in this case is uh, server.js. And as you can see there, it is listening on port 3000. We're then going to go ahead and open up a new window at the same location. Uh, you can see it here. Uh, let me see, I think, uh, no, there it is. And then we're going to go ahead and move into our other folder, which I believe was client. And now we're going to go ahead and post that data to the server. So if all of this goes well, we should see some information being posted on our window uh, that we have open there as well. And so we're going to go ahead and run node client.js and as you can see there we posted the data that was defined. So we've sent it from the client to the server. The server simply wrote it to the console. 
I'll go ahead and enter it again and you can see that as well. Now let me go ahead and show you one more thing. If we move into the client you'll see that I also have a curl file. Now we can also do it through the command line when we're testing. In this case we are defining the data within the curl command and we can also reference a file and I'll show you that later but for now I simply want to show you uh, how we can do that and I want to show you the uh, the window as well so I'm gonna go ahead and paste it here and as you can see there uh, we have that data being posted I'm going to go ahead and change it just a little bit instead of saying password spider-man I will say my word and when I hit return you can see there that it says Peter Parker my word and so again we're simply sending data from a client to a server so that's the basics now let's go ahead and move back up a couple of directories and you can you can see here that I have uh, the catcher master this is the data that is receiving the webhook event from github and let me go ahead and give you some reference material as you can see here I am uh, developer.github.com b3 and this is the uh, sample webhook as you can see here this is on pull requests when the students make the pull request it sends basically all of their data the pointers to their own repo the pointers of the repo they fork from and so this is a representative example here that you see I'm gonna go all the way to the top so that you can see that there's a bunch of other webhooks that you can listen to uh, and in this case we were looking at the pull uh, request event uh, and that's the one that we're listening to that's the kind of information that's in it and you can review it more if you like now I have all of that data here on a sample uh, file and you can see here that I have sample pretty do not use that one because it won't work it's simply so you can uh, take a look at what the structure is and what the information is it needs to be all in one line with no spacing uh, and don't worry about generating this uh, the the code that comes to you will have that formatting and so if I simply wrap you can see all of that data uh, there and it's simply machine generated so you will not have to do this by hand but it's just simply to illustrate what you're getting uh, and uh, some some sample data so that we can run this code now let's go ahead and walk through what this file is doing this is the server side as you can see here I have a number of modules that I'm using the very first one is shell slash uh, shell js slash global and I use this to do shell type commands once I am running this file I also have express which is the same one that we just used on that simple example I also require the file system module and this is to write and delete files and so on uh, I use uh, create an instance of express and then I also create a request uh, instance this is again the request module so let's go ahead and add all of those and simply let me note that if you go to npm um, let me go ahead and enter that here and we go to the information for that file let me go ahead and enter the, the right name we can get it's complaining about the name it's probably the slash and so if we go into shell JS you can see there that it is uh, widely used so let's go ahead and scroll down you can see there that there are half a million downloads in the last day uh, a couple million in the last week now this is an newer version than the one that I have you can see that I am requiring shell JS slash global uh, this one is simply shell JS I'm going to modify it and I haven't tested it so we might hit some bumps here on the road so let me go ahead and simply uh, remove the global part and hopefully that will work without having to do any adjustments but I wanted to show you this page here so you can take a look at all of the features of this module for the most part as I mentioned it allows you to do commands uh, uh, command line type uh, shell type expressions within the file itself and it has a bunch of built-in uh, commands predefined commands already like copy and push and so on so let's go ahead and go back to uh, our file 
uh, and note that we're going to add express. We saw that already. File system is one you might have seen. It's fairly common. It's part of the language itself. We don't need to add it. But request express and shell JS we do. So let's go ahead and move to the command line. And as you can see here, I am at catcher master. And so let's go ahead and add npm install. We'll add it locally. Save and we'll start off with request, a pretty vanilla one. We'll wait for that to pull down. Now let's go ahead and add express. Now let's go ahead and add shell JS. Okay, that should be good. Let's go ahead and go back to the file. Make sure we didn't miss any. No, it looks like we're good. So now let's go ahead and try to run it. Let's see if we don't get any errors. Uh, we'll go ahead and enter node and the index file, which is the one that I have open. And we have, <laughs> oh, we forgot body parser. Let's go ahead and add that one. Let's see, body parser. Let's try one more time. And it looks like we're running. Now, before I go ahead and uh, walk through the code, let me just go ahead and do a trial. Now, before I go ahead and do the trial, let me explain to you where things are coming from. I am at the root of the file that I will send you or the, the folder that I will send you. And you can see here that I have the pretty JSON data. As I mentioned, I'm not going to use that one. I'm going to use the one that says sample.json. And I have here the curl command that I'm going to enter. Uh, let me just explain to you what this is. It's simply saying I'm going to send some JSON and the file that I'm going to send is sample.json. It's in that same directory. As you can see it, it's this one right here. Uh, and uh, that's all I'm going to enter. So I'm going to go ahead and grab this and enter it. The endpoint is my own machine. It's the server running at port 3000. So let's go ahead and move back into uh, our command line. And as I mentioned, you know, in the window above, I have the server up and running and the one below, I'm going to go ahead and paste uh, the curl command. And as I mentioned, uh, uh, the, the module uh, changed a little, so hopefully I won't get any errors, but if I do, I'll go ahead and pause and debug and then come back. Okay, as you might imagine, <laughs> I'm back. I had, to, uh, I had to clean up the code a bit. For the most part, all they've done is they moved to a more uh, object-oriented approach where you have to create an instance of the module and then access the uh, methods under the module through the shell. And this is cleaner in the sense that you won't pollute uh, the namespace for this application. So that's actually a, a good decision. So if we go back to uh, our command line and we rerun the server, you can see there that it's now running on port 3000 just as before. And if I enter the command where I am referencing the, uh, the sample data, as you can see there, uh, sample.json, then we can go ahead and hit the server. And let me go ahead and move into the file system so that you can see this sort of stuff that it does. It, you'll see that it creates a folder. It does a number of things that I will walk through the code with you afterwards, but I want you to see what will happen here. Uh, let me go ahead and move slightly uh, to the side. Well, let me let me do this instead. Uh, you can see there that uh, we're going to go ahead and get an echo, and then uh, we'll see a, a uh, some feedback on the command line. So I'm going to go ahead and hit return. You can see there that I got an echo, and you can see that some folders appeared on top. One, this Kalima, and then this other one with the uh, numbers, and then they're both gone again. And you can see that we got some feedback on the command line, at both at the server and at the client. Uh, this is all made just for debugging and understanding what's going on. So let me go ahead and move back to the code and walk through this code. The first part of it, uh, lines 1 through 5, are simply creating instances of the modules. 
Uh, then we define the URL which we will not be using because this is simply to illustrate to you what's going on in the background. I had a machine that I was pointing all of this data to. As you can see here, store.1xc.org. Uh, we, we will not be using that. The next part is simply setting up the parsing of the data that comes in. Uh, this is the same thing that we did in the basics example. And then the rest of the file is simply handling that post. Right. I define a few functions at the beginning here. One is bad payload. This is simply to check whether the payload that has been posted is is uh, a proper one, the structure that we're expecting. Um, the second one is a function simply to delete directories. Uh, the other one is one is looking at the payload. The other one is looking at JSON itself. Is it proper JSON? Uh, then we get into the try, which is where the the bulk of the operations are done. The very first one is simply echoing the JSON that was sent. And if you look at the command line, you can see here uh, this was echoed back to the client, simply the data that was posted. We then validate the data uh, using the functions that you saw before. We then clone the student repository, so your machine that you're operating on needs to have uh, credentials so that you can hit and again this is server side so this is a one setup only uh, and you can see here that uh, I am uh, simply pulling out some data from the webhook the first one is the student login then the repo URL uh, the student repo name uh, I then uh, go ahead and delete the directory once I don't need it anymore and I then clone with a git command. Remember through this module I can do shell commands so I can go ahead and do a git clone. I then uh, clone the base repository so one of them is the student, the other one is the base repo. This is the one that the instructors would have created. We do the same thing, we clone that one. Uh, we validate uh, if the student folder exists. As I was mentioning before uh, once we move into this mode, uh, if we are not going to require the students to create a special directory, which we shouldn't, if we can, then we can do away with these types of checks, but these are here from the past. Uh, we then overwrite the student folder, and this is just to keep them honest, in case they modified or tinkered with the tests. Uh, then we move into the folder, uh, and we check, uh, we pick up some data from package.json, as you can see here. We then modify the test uh, string in this case. This is simply because we were trying to integrate the two packages. Uh, we handle, uh, let me see, handle console logs in Mocha tests. This is uh, running the Mocha test, as you can see here. Uh, and then on this one, we handle some console logs in the uh, Mocha test. We install some dependencies, uh, npm install, in case that's necessary. Uh, and then uh, we validate test results to make sure that the test JSON exists. Uh, then we check for bad JSON <laughs> and we add a webhook. Let me see. Uh, this is simply just uh, adding some of the data that we got from the webhook and we're passing it on to the data that's going to be stored in the database. As you can see here I have some data that uh, I used at some point for debugging. Then uh, we clean up, meaning delete uh, the repos, both the base uh, repo name and the student repo name. Uh, and at this point here we would post to the database. This is doing the same thing as the webhook, but this is one that we've generated ourselves. Uh, on the other side there's simply a database that writes this into uh, a table. Uh, this is simply a document that gets stored. It's as simple as that. Uh, then from if in case there's an error we want to know about it and so this catches the error we you know build an object that we send to the database itself. So as students uh, start to post, or if there's problems going on in the system, we can find out about them. So that's pretty much it. I'll go ahead and zip this folder up and send it over to you. Uh, we can have a follow-up in case you have questions. Okay, bye.